it's time to start looking at the fruits that are being produced on our peach trees and Becky is hard at work already doing that. Becky, tell me what we're looking at. Well, a lot of people are reporting that they have huge peach crops this mm -hmm. year. And so I was looking to see if we need to thin any of these trees here at uh, the Botanic Gardens. And um, so I, I was looking at some of these fruits that are attached here. And then I've already picked off some that we can look at. Okay. But, um, what we want to do is make sure that our trees aren't overloaded. Okay. Every branch can just be covered with peaches and that can cause those limbs to break off. So we'll lose entire scaffolds some years just due to overproduction. And you also get smaller fruit, right? Right. You left them all they, they don't size properly and they don't ripen properly. So we'll end up with little golf balls that aren't hard, okay. mostly pit with just a little bit of, of good peach, but it, it just doesn't soften up and, and ripen properly. Gotcha. And so um, we want to get nice large peaches that are nice and juicy and sweet. And so if we have too many on the tree, they just can't ripen them like they should. And so we're gonna reduce the number to about four to six inches between each peach. Okay. And if you want even larger peaches, you can go maybe eight to 10 inches between. <laughs> and you know, I like some of those really big juicy Loring peaches. They're a little cold sensitive, so they have less peaches and they get bigger. All right. And so, um, but on this peach tree, you can see we've got, um, we've got some that are kind of clustered here together and about uh, the length from my fingertip to my thumb is about six inches. So we're gonna remove some of these, but we're not just gonna pick off any of them. We're gonna look for peaches that have insect feeding, that are smaller, or maybe um, have some kind of injury due to rubbing on a branch or something. Okay. So um, on this one, we can see anywhere that the, the fuzz of the peach is kind of disrupted, kind of shows a little spot, mm -hmm. then that might indicate that there's been some feeding going on. Now, it doesn't mean there's gonna be a worm in there, but it just may be a little corky spot when that fruit develops. Now, sometimes you might find a worm, but, <laughs> but usually um, this time of the season, when you see those little spots, it's gonna show where maybe a stink bug or a ligus bug's been feeding. So something like that where you've yep. got that little and, brown And spot. it causes the little uh, spots in the, the fuzz, uh -huh. but it can also be something like this where you can see like the little um, gamosis or little goo that's kind of dripping out of there. And some, some of the times that can be clear and it's just a little string that may be dripping out of the peach. And then we also want to um, try to save the largest peaches on the stems and just remove the smaller ones. Now this year we've had some really uh, sporadic blooms. So we've got some little tiny peaches and these are, are coming off very easily. So if you've got these, make sure that you're not counting them as one of your okay. uh, peaches to leave because they're probably going to drop off anyway. So these were all on the same tree here, the, the different yeah. varying sizes. Yeah. yeah. And so we want to make sure that, you know, we're, we're leaving the best ones for our fruiting potential. Okay. And then if you have doubles, uh, that those are the ones that you want to make uh, you can take off as well. Now, if you don't have anything else, I know a lot of people that are pretty much all doubles this year, they'll go ahead and develop. Uh, this one, this side will probably slow down. And so it'll kind of have a larger fruit with a little small attached appendage. Okay. So it kind of looks like a nose or something. <laughs> but but so, it, it tastes fine, It tastes right? fine, yeah. You don't know you, once it gets into a cobbler right. what and, it looks and like. And you, you can eat the, the good side anyway, okay. for sure. Okay. But on this, on this one, we would go ahead and um, maybe take off uh, this fruit. Okay. And then maybe uh, this one's a little smaller, so I'm gonna take it off. And then we'll look here closely for any fruit, any insect feeding. This one looks like it's... Uh, Is that damaged yep, right there? Yep, that, that one, we'll spot. go ahead and take that one off. And then uh, this one as well. Okay. So we'll leave that one shoot with two peaches, or three peaches, and they're kind of spaced out through there. Now, if your tree has um, some areas where there's not a lot of fruit, but you have a couple of peaches in one area mm -hmm. and nothing else really on that branch, sometimes you can leave them as long as they're not gonna grow into each other. Okay. You don't want them to, um, to limit the size and, and kind of rub on each other. Gotcha. So spacing is important, but there are times when we may leave a couple 
if that's all that's there. Okay, well, what about, you know, protecting these? I mean, what if an insect shows up on this tomorrow? Sure. Um, insecticides and fungicides are both um, really important on our peach crop mm -hmm. because we have brown rot that uh, the infections can occur even at bloom time and then not show up until they're ripening. And so we can do protection with using fungicides, conventional or uh, organic, and we also need to watch our, uh, for insect feeding, like we've seen on some of these already, uh -huh. uh, protect those fruits from things like stink bugs and lagus bugs, and also plum curculio that's gonna lay the eggs that makes the, the worm inside the fruit later. And so uh, we've got some, some things besides using the, the sprays, we can actually use uh, called a fruit bag. Okay. And Clemson University has um, been using these uh, kind of testing them to see how they work, and it seems to work great. Okay. Um, what we recommend is that you apply your last fungicide insecticide spray the day before you put your bags on, and that gives you, you know, if there's any spores or anything on this fruit that day, then you're protecting it. You put your bags on, they stay on through the whole season, and it may even give you protection from squirrels okay. and, and other, in, uh, you know, animals that might be uh, fooled by having a bag instead of a peach right, up there. Right, so literally the peach grows in that bag. It stays in the bag. It's kind of almost like a wax paper, okay. and it gives it enough light penetration that the fruit go ahead and color up good, mm -hmm. and uh, it just keeps any spores or any insects from getting in there and feeding or damaging the fruit. Okay, so that might be a little bit more of an organic option. Yep. So you have bags all over your trees then. Yeah, it'll look kind of like Halloween with all these paper little ghosts hanging <laughs> in your trees. But that's a good reason to keep your trees low or pruned where you can reach them to harvest and also to manage them with using fruit bags. All right, Becky, thank you so much for sharing what we need to do with our peach trees all right, right, right. now. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.